Yes, this all looks nominal. Big day today, Freeman. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of GameCraft. GameCraft is the YouTube channel where we take video game characters and bring them to life in the art form known as Papercraft. I'm Mike, the Papercraft designer and artist, and I'm joined with me here on the line today with Joe and Derek, our GameCraft partners. They're here to help me with a commentary for a model that we're going to go over today. So today we're showcasing the model of the Ichthyosaur from Half-Life 1. This is definitely one of the more detailed models from the Half-Life 1 universe. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that the GameCraft channel is making progress on its way to meeting the goal of a thousand subscribers. Please subscribe to the GameCraft channel to follow all of our projects and to help us reach our goal of a thousand subscribers. And we'd also like to reach a goal of 50 likes on this video. We gotta start somewhere, but we definitely appreciate that. Thanks again. Thanks for doing this commentary with me with me you guys appreciate it yeah. so the ichthyosaur is basically introduced into the half-life series with the best possible animation just obliterating a scientist i always feel ba so bad for the scientists <laughs> they're just get <laughs> they always get stuck somewhere eaten <laughs> exploded Stop. can we oh. all agree that killing scientists is probably the best thing about half-life <laughs> it's one of the most it's like you don't even have to kill them dude they yeah, it's like, it's up to you. you. Like, they give you the choice. On the Half-Life box, it actually tells you that you can choose to kill a scientist and let him get killed, or you could save him and he'll possibly help you later, is what it said. And, it's, and it has a picture of, like, a, a, a grunt killing the scientist. <laughs> or choking the scientist in the air like he's super strong. But the, the Ichthyosaur was actually showcased on the back of the Half-Life box. The original box had a picture of the Ichthyosaur on the back. And then they kind of showcased it like, oh, look at our models. Look how good they look. Yeah, and they did at the time. Oh, yeah. I remember really playing really this back in the day on your computer, Joe, and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. What is the computer the computer computer handle it? Yeah, 1998. It's like 20 year old uh, RTX 2080 Ti Super. I don't even know what we had at the time. I didn't even think I had the Voodoo 2 card yet. Oh, man. I remember the Voodoo cards. Yeah. The cool thing is, when he was first introduced, is that you only got a glimpse of him, of him at first. He jumps out of the water, he eats a scientist, and then he goes back in. You never see him until you actually have to confront him face to face. Yeah, and it's neat how they kind of trick you into confronting him. You go in the cage and it falls as a horror aspect to it. Like, yeah, oh, it was shoot, definitely shoot. creepy. Interesting fact, ichthyosaur means fish lizard. Ichthy meaning fish and Soros yeah. meaning lizard. I'm reading the Wikipedia page. <laughs> but I will give it to Valve on this because the Ichthyosaur model is extremely detailed for that type of generation of game. I had a, kind of some difficulty crafting this together because of how many faces were on it. And they were kind of, I, I want to say they were kind of thrown together. Like even though it was detailed, it was really um, inconsistent in, in some places, I would say, because the triangles and the faces were kind of just all mashed together. How many faces did it have? Well, let me pull up the program and I'll tell you. Like, what's the highest that you've done? Do you well, know? I can, I can tell you that the Doom 3 models that I've done are in thousands. Oh my god. Yeah. So, and those are, those are by far some of the most detailed models that I've created. In retrospective to Half-Life, it's just going to be a couple hundred. But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really keep track of the actual face numbers. Now, so the Ichthyosaur... Oh, wow. The Ichthyosaur has 1,511 faces. Damn. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, so the so like I was saying earlier, it was kind of thrown together like cancer. It's like it didn't make any sense. But when you render it, you don't see all the faces. They're kind of all blurred together in the same textures. So the, it, it works in the game, but when it comes to paper crafting, it was a pain in the ass. Yeah. Especially the teeth. Did it have a lot of overlapping faces? It didn't have many overlapping faces, but what it had instead is it was all sectioned out. Because I think the ichthyosaur uses like more than 10 different textures. The Okay, so I'm looking at the ichthyosaur texture files, and it has 10 different textures. One of the textures has a large eye, and one of the textures has a small eye. I kind of thought the small eye was the best, so I chose the small eye to papercraft, but it actually switches between the textures, between the small eye and the big eye, whenever he sees you. So it's when he, whenever he's idle, he has this like small fish-like eyeball. And then whenever yeah. he sees you, the, the title of the texture is called Mad Eye. And apparently <laughs> he, gets, he gets mad and sees you, and his eye gets oh. a lot bigger. That's such an underappreciated feature, too, because I never noticed it. Yeah, yeah I would have I, never I, to known. To be honest, I never knew about it either until I started messing around with the model file. It sucks that like some programmer probably spent hours on that feature, and then it just it, nobody ever even knew it. Yeah, days like, and days. Could you imagine him going to his boss and like telling him, "Oh yeah, man, I made the ichthyosaur have angry eyes whenever he sees yeah. it." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Whoa, man! Gabe was actually very involved in the designing back then. Yeah. He's probably like, that's such a stupid idea that I'm going to delay this game for another 12 years. <laughs> Did you see it? They said it was hauled from the Challenger Deep, but I'm positive that beast never swam in terrestrial waters until a week ago. There's a tranquilizer gun in the shark cage, but I'm not sure it would work on this species. You're welcome to try. How do you think the Ichthyosaur sort of got there? Like, was it part of the teleportation, like, Lambda complex? Well, the Lambda labs were doing surveying in Zen before the whole Resonance Cascade went down. Right. So they definitely took some samples and brought them back. So I'm thinking that Ichthyosaur is one of them. And probably what they did is just came up with some kind of story. That way they could explain it to the scientists there. Yes, they did. Huh? So if you think about it, Eli is telling you that they said it came from the Challenger Deep. But it never swam in terrestrial waters until a week ago. Oh uh, yeah, so it was a cover. I didn't think about that, but yeah, good point. Yeah, so it was definitely a cover up. So I guess they weren't even in on it. Right. I wonder if it was pissed off to have to swim in normal water. It's like, what the hell, man? That's why it wants to kill you. The scientist refers to the crossbow gun originally as a tranquilizer gun. Why do you think that is? I think they had to work they had to work they wanted this cool crossbow. In the game, they're like, well, how do we justify it being in the Black Mesa Research Center? I'm like, well, we'll make it a tranquilizer. So you but you never, really, the, uh... you never think of it being a tranquilizer. Yeah. So maybe they're in like the boardroom together and they're like throwing ideas at the wall. And one guy says, oh, we need a crossbow. And the other guy's like, yeah, but that doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> so is the ammo like darts instead of arrows, I guess? It kind of metal. does look like they are dark. Like metal Cause, darts. Yeah, because when I picked it, I remember when we were playing, I picked it up and I was like, that kind of looks like a dart. Like, ah. <laughs> That's weird. Because it you know, didn't whenever, stick. Whenever you shoot something with it, they never get back up. Which leads me to believe it's not a tranquilizer. Or it'll explode if you're in multiplayer, and that's really not tranquil. Yeah, in the <laughs> multiplayer mode, the, the arrow darts explode when they hit the target if you're not zoomed in. Yeah, Rambo. I think that they originally had the storyline where the crossbow was not a crossbow. It was a tranquilizer gun from the beginning. And maybe they just integrated it and eventually made it to the crossbow, and then just never wanted to go back and change the audio files. Yeah, they might have yeah. slipped by them. It also leads me to believe that the ichthyosaur was one of the very first things that they did in the Half-Life universe. And this was maybe one of the first ideas that they had with the whole shark cave. So here's a picture of one of the textures in Half-Life 1. Where it shows the skeletal structure of the ichthyosaur. Xenotherus ichthycanthus. 
So maybe the reason why they have this is maybe they were studying it and they were trying to bring up a false narrative of why they had it. And that's why they lied about getting it from Challenger Deep. Yeah. I got that documentation printed out pretty quick. I think it only been there a week. Pretty cool texture. So it later appeared in Pose and Forest, but it was never used in Half-Life 1. Another cool thing about this is that I've made it to scale with the other papercraft models that I made. So he's perfectly scaled for the scientists to eat him. How do you like scale it like that? Do you have to enter the, the custom dimensions and things? So the program? in, in Papakura, I actually, I actually have it pulled up here. Let me show this. All right, so here's Pepakura. There's actually a grid in the new version that tells you specifically how long it's going to be or what the size is. So you as you can see here, there's, there's dimensional boxes that'll tell you exactly how long the, the model will be, how wide it'll be. That's cool, man. Also, for the tail of the Ichthyosaur, I actually put a wire inside the tail that's bendable. So I can bend it in different yeah. directions. So articulation right i did that authentic <laughs> i did that specifically so i could have him in different poses it's it's basically the action figure man yeah. you could use that as bait serious question uh do you think you could waterproof one well i i Paraffin? suppose that we could dip it into maybe like like epoxy yeah the no. reason i asked is because if i ever had a, a fish tank again that'd be really cool <laughs> thing to put in there but yeah. I suppose, yeah, you definitely could put it inside a fish tank. If you wanted to, you just have to coat it in epoxy. Now, the lamination process that I use does seal the paper underneath it. But the only thing is, though, it's only one-sided lamination. So water could potentially leak through the other side of it. That would be really cool. That actually would. And you could put, like, a, a dead scientist down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a shark cage. Make a little cage, yeah. Little crossbow in there. Or tranquilizer. tranquilizer. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> so let's take a look at some of the animations that the Ichthyosaur has. Oh, here's him dying. So when he when he dies, he get, he goes up to the surface of the water and floats like an upside down fish. Yeah, we all had that goldfish as a kid that ended up like that. Now you gotta go flushing down the toilet. <laughs> and but don't tell anybody about it. Yeah, exactly. He went to be with his fish friends. <laughs> But you know what they say, all pipes lead to the ocean. I don't think that's true. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. That's what they said <laughs> in <laughs> Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so check him out. This is him biting. Man, that's an ugly joker. Uh, this is him biting to the left, it looks like. And this is him attacking, like grabbing you first. I don't know if I, I don't know if they use that in, or that uh, animation in game, do they? They might. I don't remember seeing that. I think this model's got more detail than they used. Oh, dude, this is the one where he actually jumps out of the water and eats the scientist. Uh, Let me try to frame this. I think this model <laughs> has more detail than they actually used. All right, so this is him jumping up out of the water and eating a scientist. Oh no, actually, look, there's two of them. So this one says hit the cage. It looks like that the cage was actually supposed to get hit by the ichthyosaur. Oh. That, that would have been a cool effect. So it looks like the cage was supposed to break by the ichthyosaur jumping up and, and biting it. Now that, cool that looks like, could, like it was never a used animation. You should, it'd be so cool if you could recreate like the lost Wait. files. We actually could. We could go through and make it like that. Have to do the last chapters. Like if we ever do a Savin co-op map, we should add that animation in there. Yeah, so apparently right there, during that moment, he was supposed to jump up and grab the cave. That actually would have been really cool. Yeah. But I, I wonder why they didn't put it in. They probably had some sort of strings. You know, they couldn't figure it out, maybe. Yeah. So there's another really popular Half-Life 1 level with the Ichthyosaur. I'm gonna go ahead and load it up here, see if you guys recognize it. Oh, I remember this. Damn. Yeah, it's the level with the dam. And as you can see, I spawned in a bunch of Ichthyosaurs. I thought this was one of the best well-designed levels. 
This is what the inside of your mother's stomach looks like. I remember getting stuck in that, uh, the dam there. Panicking as I'm trying to open the valve. I'm panicking right now. <laughs> if you ever tried to make a level like this in the, uh, level editor, it's actually really hard. Oh, I bet. <laughs> This How is on nightmare mode. Uh, probably like a hundred something. It's like two hundred. It's like hell. It's like your mother's ovaries. So it's really cool to spawn a Theosaurus out of water because they still attack. Are they shooting at it? Yeah. Even the helicopter. What the hell is that thing? I basically spawned like 30 of them in the same spot. Hey, you just gotta get them. You could spawn like any soldiers? That's so funny. Dude. Oh, yeah, I totally can. Yeah, you need to make videos like this, I swear. <laughs> uh, cool. yeah. Those are Marines, not soldiers. Uh, I think it's, uh. My mistake. Give monster human grunt. <laughs> but back to papercraft. So this is the folding animation, the concept of it coming off of the paper and being folded into the three-dimensional object. As you can see, all of the flat faces are folded to form the polygon model. So the teeth were a pain in the ass here. I couldn't get it exactly as they appear in the game because apparently they use a lot of triangles in the teeth themselves, maybe to make them look more jagged. I just couldn't get it perfect, but I did the best I could, and it actually turned out pretty good. Yeah, it actually does look really good. British teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but this ichthyosaur model is going to go on the shelf with all my other Half-Life Papercraft models. It definitely makes a great addition. Until we waterproof it, then it's going in my fish tank. <laughs> it's going inside the fish tank. Do you have a fish, fish tank, tank yet? Not yet, but I, I'll get one for it. Just yeah. for the ichthyosaur. <laughs> Just get a shark cage when you can put a tranquilizer gun in there. Yeah, with little toothpick darts. <laughs> so I remember seeing the ichthyosaur for the first time and it was super creepy. Freaked me out, filled me with anxiety, and it's legit still scary to this day. Like when we play Sven and there's something swimming around that water, like it just freaks me out and I panic. Like legit. It leaves a lasting impression even all these years later. Yeah, something's fishy. Yeah, it's still, it's definitely, even, even though uh, looking at it with modern eyes, the, the models are a little blockier than they, they once were. It, it is still a terrifying experience. And uh, definitely one of those things you want to avoid in the game. Yeah, bringing up an element of, like, Jaws is definitely another horror aspect of Half-Life. And I think the Ichthyosaur does a great job of instilling some of that fear when you're underneath the water. You're never safe. So that about wraps up our discussion on the Ichthyosaur model. We appreciate everyone tuning in and checking us out. Go ahead and head over to the Gamecraft channel to see other videos of the other creations that we've made as well. If you're not subscribed already, please make sure that you're subscribed to follow any new content that we put out in the future. We're also very active on social media if you'd like to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And if you'd like to support our work, please check out our Patreon page where you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. Again, we appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video. Bring games to life.